What's up everyone and today we'll finally implement our hands using C++ and combination of blueprints. We'll have working animations and hands exactly where our motion controllers are. So let's go ahead and do this. So the way we are going to do it is first we're going to work with our character a little bit and then we're going to spawn the hands and our character will have its own hands. Let's go ahead in our Visual Studio and now we're going to work with our character base right here. So we already know how to add components and what we need to do. On top of our existing character we created, we need to add a camera because we need to see somehow, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create camera. So we'll write T object pointer. Camera is our camera component. So in Unreal Engine, it's you camera component. And let's call it camera like this. Of course, this object needs a U property. So we're going to say U property visible anywhere and blueprint read only like this. So as you can see, your camera component is not accessible. Therefore, we need to forward declare it. We already learned what is forward declaration. It's when we tell our header file that we are planning to have this class as a definition. And once our project compiles, it will tell us if we have provided the definition for our camera component. Right now, we're just telling our header file, okay, look, I'm going to have my camera component, but yet you don't know what that is. And now once we have our camera, now we go to C++. And how to include camera, camera is located at camera, camera component, you can see it right here. And now we are able to construct our camera. So now we know what is our camera. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get my camera, create default sub object, you camera component, and I'm going to call it camera like this. And I'm going to attach it. So I'm going to do camera setup attachment. So and now let's look what we have. So as you can see, by default, our character has mesh, arrow and capsule component. Where I want to attach our camera is to our mesh. So we can attach it to our mesh. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call setup attachment, attach it to get mesh. So our ABR character base is derived from character. And character has this function get mesh. And let's look at what it returns. As you can see, it returns the mesh. Exactly this skeletal mesh component right here. So that's what we are getting. We're returning the mesh from this function. It's provided by Unreal Engine. You can also see the description. Okay, so now we have constructed our camera. And let's, of course, double check it and compile our project. Make sure you save all the files. It's essential. Otherwise, it will not work. So as you can see, we have our camera right here. And that's the same camera you have in your VR. So what we are going to do is since we're playing in VR, our camera should be at the bottom, how our VR pawn works. So if we go to VR pawn, you will see that our camera is a child of VR origin and VR origin is actually located on the floor. But in our case, our camera is a child of mesh and mesh is located here. So when we're going to position our camera, it will be higher, always higher because camera tracks the distance from its parent, from its mesh. So if our height is 180 centimeters, it will count 180 centimeters from this point right here. So 180 centimeters right here. Again, our mesh's origin is here. Therefore, if camera is a child, it will track our height starting from the mesh center from this point. In order for our camera to start counting from the bottom, we'll need to create another scene component and then make a camera a child of that scene component. So I'm going back to my VR character base I can copy this right here and I can plug it underneath the camera. And now it's going to be you scene component. <clears throat> we do not need to forward declare it since our parent already has the scene component definition. So I will call it origin and with capital letter like this. But now once we want to construct origin, we have to do it before. So I'll write origin, create default sub object to use scene component origin. And I'm going to make origin setup attachment. I'm going to set it up to get mesh like this. But now I need to change my camera. I want my camera to be a child of origin. So I'm going to plug origin in here like this. So let's go ahead and compile it again. I have a successful compile. Now we'll just go to our C++. We'll make sure origin get mesh camera goes to origin. So as you can see right now, our camera is not a child of origin. In those cases, sometimes Unreal Engine can bug out when you compile. So what I would suggest you do is when you're having cases like that, that you're adding additional component, what I would suggest you do is to close your Unreal Engine project and actually rebuild it from your 
Visual Studio. So I'll press Ctrl F5 and I will rebuild the project. And that should fix our issue. And usually it works always. If you see your code actually working, you think it works, but Unreal Engine displays something wrong, don't hesitate to close your Unreal Engine project and rebuild it through the Visual Studio. Let's see right now if it had been fixed. And as you can see right now, it was successfully fixed. So now we have to put our origin right in here on the bottom, right? That's where we start counting. So in order to do that, don't go ahead and guess the value. Don't do it. What you can do instead to get the exact value, we can just take our capsule half height and we can put it to the origin with the minus sign like this. And it will be exactly at the bottom. And the camera, we just refresh its relative location. So it snapped to the origin. Now, if you're 180 centimeters tall, your camera will count 180 centimeters from the origin like that. So now it will represent your real height. So make sure your camera is there and we compile and save. Now let's look at our hands. So I may have my hand left and hand right. So let's open them real quick. So here are my hands, they're completely empty. Let's fill them up. So our left hand uses our left hand mesh. So I will use mannequin left. Now right hand, I will have hand right. Our VR pawn, let me open it real quick, uses you can see ABP Mannequin XR. So we're going to use the same. Let's go to our right hand and I'm going to use ABP Mannequin XR. And same we do with our left hand. ABP Mannequin XR. Great. Now once we have it, we need to have the transform right. Because currently our hand is not aligned properly. So what I'm going to do, let's look at our VR pawn. As you can see, left hand has its own transform in here. We'll need to replicate the same transform. And I'm guys going to show you a very good hotkey that will save you a bunch of time. It's shift right click. You can copy the whole section of transform by pressing, by holding shift and right click. You'll see it was highlighted here once I copy. So we hold shift, right click, and now this is copied to our clipboard. We go to our left hand, since this is the left hand, and we paste it here by shift left click. And as you can see, all the settings have been applied. Let's do the same with our right hand. We will go to our VR pawn, click on right hand, and we'll copy the transform by holding shift and pressing right mouse button. We'll go to our right hand, hold shift and left mouse button, and you'll see everything is aligned. Great. Now I want to actually see my hands in game, right? That, that's what we have been here for. So what I want to do, is that let's look at VR pawn. VR pawn has the hand right in its blueprint, but we are going to spawn the hands. So I'm going to my VR character in here, and let's copy all the code that VR pawn has. And mainly, we'll copy this code right here. So I will select that. I will select that. It's all the inputs we'll need. This, this, and this. I'm going to press Control C. I'm going to my character, and I'll copy it right here. So again, we're doing combination of C++ and Blueprints. Some things are easier to do in C++, some things are easier to do in Blueprints. I'm going to condense my code a little bit. It's too much space. I'm going to do something like that. And I'm going to add a sequence node. So now we'll structure our code. We'll make it clean. So I'll use some sequences. How to do it quickly, we can drag from here and press S on our keyboard. You'll see it automatically connects the pins. Now we'll do the same here. And now we'll just spawn our hands. Spawn actor from class. We'll do BP left hand and we'll do BP right hand like this. But don't test it yet. Let's split those structure pins so we did not get any compilation errors. What do we need to do, guys, is to set the owner of the hands. If you expand this drop downs right here, you will see the owner pin and you need to set the owner because the way our motion controllers are mapped to our actual real life controllers is through ownership. As you can see in here, our motion controller is already created in our VR pawn. Therefore, its owner is automatically assigned to VR pawn. But in our case, we are spawning the hands out of nowhere. So we need to specify what our owner is. Make sure you do this. Otherwise, your hands will not work. They will not move. They will just spawn and be at the same place. So I will connect my self pin to the owner. Remember, this is a very crucial step. Make sure you do it. Afterwards, we can hit compile and save. Now, what we can do, I will go to my level. I'll go to world settings and make sure in default pawn class, you will choose BP VR character. You need to change it. Otherwise, you will be playing as VR pawn. So I will just go ahead and test my game right now. I'll show you we'll have a little issue. 
You can see now, our hands are actually following our controllers, but we are very far from our hands. And the problem here is that we are spawning our hands at 0, 0, 0. So we need to, sp to actually move the hands where we are located. And we need to attach them. So what I would do is I would attach actor to component. Because you can see in here in VR pawn, our motion controller is a child of VR origin. So motion controller is located exactly where VR origin is. So in here, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to attach it to my origin. Make sure we select snap to target, snap to target, and keep world. I'm going to do the same for my right hand, like this. Compile and save. Now, let's see if it has been fixed. And as you can see now, it's exactly in the position we want it to be. But we don't have animations. So let's quickly go ahead and fix that. So to fix our animations, it's just copying. I will go to my VR pawn and let's see what we have here. You can see that we have animations for left hand and animations for right hand. So I'm going to copy things for left hand and I'm going to my left hand event graph and I'm going just to paste it here. Now we have to replace those variables because if you compile, you'll see they don't exist. And there is also a very handy way to do it. So follow me. I will press control and I will drag can mesh to here. And you can see it, it is replaced right away. So instead of doing this, you could actually drag a variable itself onto this node. And let's do it everywhere. Again, I'm holding my control, left click, left clicking here and dragging it to the variable. Now we can hit compile. And as you can see, there are no issues at all. Let's do the same with right hand. I'm going to VR pawn. I'm going to copy the right hand animation code and I'm going to put it in my right hand blueprint. And I'm going to do here the same. What we'll have to do now is to deparent our hands. So go ahead in your class settings in BP right hand and make sure you'll select your parent class to VR hand. That's the C++ class we created because our right hand previously was a child of left hand. So make sure you will select VR hand and I will explain you later on why we are doing this. I know in previous tutorial I told you to do this way, but now we're going to change it a little bit. So make sure you will change the VR hand here. It's a C++ class, not blueprint. And afterwards, make sure you have your hand type of right hand set to right hand because if you deparent the class it sometimes might change your variables so make sure right hand has hand type set to right and left hand has hand type set to left and another thing we need to do is our variable so you know that we have a variable called mirror animation and also make sure mirror animation is set to true on left hand and mirror animation is set to false on right hand we need to tell our animation blueprint whether it needs to mirror animation or not mirror animation. So what we are going to do, we are going to copy this code right here. I'm going to paste it right here and set mirror. And if we are going to use our mirror animation variable here, and we're going to connect it right in this set node, I'm going to do the same for our right hand. So, Let's test our hands right now, if it's working or if it's not, and it is not working. And there is a very good reason for this. So if you want your actor to respond to input actions, you need to explicitly tell this actor that it needs to have its input enabled. So each actor has a function called enable input. So we're going to plug it in here. And player controller, we're just going to say get player controller. And the same we are going to do for our left hand, like this. Now let's go ahead and test if this works. As you can see now, our animation is working and we have our hands. But there is one more thing I want you to do. If you really care about how professional you are in Unreal Engine and how well you build your games, you would consider avoiding repeating code and make your program modular and generally have your code look good. Currently, as you can see, our right hand have same piece of code right here. And that's a bad practice. I'll quickly draw a diagram here with left hand and right hand. Currently, our left hand has its own input. It differs from right hand, correct? We have different nodes. We have IA hand grasp left, IA hand grasp right. So we have different nodes. So it's okay. We do not repeat the code for input. But for begin play, we repeat the code. And that's what makes programming 
really bad repeating the code, right? So what I would suggest as doing, let's create a parent and base, which will have this begin play here. So we'll take this begin play and move it here. And that's how we'll avoid repeating the code. So since left hand and right hand are derived from hand base, they will execute its begin play and therefore will avoid repeating the code. Let's go ahead and implement this. So I'm going to create another blueprint class. It's going to be VR hand. I'm going to call it VP hand base. Let's open it. And I'm not going to mess up with the settings here. So no need to change anything. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my left hand or right hand, doesn't matter. We'll cut this code, control X, and we'll paste it in our hand base here. Now we'll go to our right hand and we can remove this code too. Now, we are not yet parented to hand base. So let's change our parent. Class settings, parent, hand base. Like this. And the same for our left hand. So afterwards, make sure none of the settings have been changed. So our left hand has left and true here. And our right hand has right and false in here. Okay. And final step is to add a call to parent function. Since we want to call our parents begin play. So add a call to parent function. And the same thing we do in our left hand. Like this. So now both left hand and right hand call parents begin play first and then execute their own. So that's how we avoid repeating the code. So to sum everything up, if we want to do something that is same for both left hand and right hand, we'll do it in our hand base. But if we have functionality that is related only to one hand, so for instance, we want to do something in right hand, but not in the left hand, something unique, we would go to their respective blueprints. So let's go and check everything we have done so far, if it still works. Everything still works. We have our working hands. So that was the end of this part. And I hope you guys learned a lot. If it was complex, let me know in my Discord channel. I will, I'm very happy to answer all of your questions. So go ahead and dump them in my Discord channel.